So, a little bit late to the party, but don't worry. We're going to be doing a video. It's the 15 to 25 f2.8, but we are actually going to be comparing it against the 16 to 35 PZ lens. Now, this is the lens that I currently own, but will I actually switch to this lens? Because it's like half the price of a GM, plus it's an f2.8. This is an f4. Do I do it? And if you don't have either of these, I mean, which one would you get? Well, you would probably get the f2.8, right? But uh, the f4's kind of got power zoom. It's got a few extra features. This is what we have to discover in this video, and we may as well just, you know, do a straight up comparison, see which one may work for you in your situation, and uh, see if it's worth your money. So let's get into it. What's going on, my friends? I hope you're all doing fantastic. If you're new to my channel, please consider giving this video a like, because a lot of people are watching, but not liking. But uh, we're going to be talking about that lens that you're looking through right now, wide 16 millimeters. I usually don't use a 16 mil lens. I use my 24 GM lens, and it will look very similar to... Eh, something like this. This is kind of like what you normally would see in these kind of videos, but uh, it is a very good release and Sony are trying to attack uh, Tamron. They're trying to attack Sigma and get a really nice budget f2.8 lens in there, which is great. I love when Sony are bringing out more budget options. And then you would probably think, why don't you go the Sigma option? It's like 200 bucks cheaper. The Tamron's like 300 bucks cheaper. Well, this has a whole bunch more buttons. It has an iris ring. It's a little bit sharper. So you might as well pay a couple extra hundred bucks and get the Sony branded one, which will definitely work well with uh, autofocus speeds as well, because we all know native lenses generally will be a lot faster and keep up when it comes to autofocus, especially with the newer cameras. Like the A93, it's meant to keep up with the 120 frames per second stills. But enough rambling, let's get into some of the specs of both of these lenses. So the Sony 16 to 25 f 2.8 G lens has a maximum aperture of f 2.8 to a minimum aperture of f 22. It has a declickable aperture ring, a focus hold button, an AF to MF switch, has an 11 blade aperture diaphragm, a front filter thread of 67 millimeters, and weighs a total of 409 grams. The Sony 16 to 35 f 4 PZ G lens has a maximum aperture of f 4 to a minimum aperture of f 22, and also has the declickable aperture ring, the focus hold button the AF to MF switch, it has an iris lock, and a power zoom switch, a 7 blade aperture diaphragm, a 72 millimeter front filter thread, and weighs a total of 353 grams. So one of the biggest fighting points with the 16 to 35 lens against the 16 to 25 is obviously that focal length. It's 10 millimeters on that long end. And 16 to 35 kind of gives you the four general wide angle uh, focal lengths, the 16, the 24, and the 35. Whereas the 16 to 25 only kind of gives you that 16 and 25. And I mean, you still obviously can go anything in between all these focal lengths, but that extra 10 millimeters can look a little bit more natural, especially if you are going to be do, you know, doing some portrait stuff, things that you want to not have as much wide angle sort of distorted distortion look but both of these are bought for the very reason that you may actually do a lot of vlogging you may do architecture photography you may actually do uh, real estate photography some wedding shots so these kind of lenses are sort of designed for that wider end uh, demographic and having that extra 10 millimeters may not actually be worth it for some people. Now, I went to my local Supernova convention, which is kind of like Comic-Con, a whole bunch of cosplay and anime stuff, which was really cool. And I feel like the 16 millimeters F2.8 was very good in indoors because obviously that low light capabilities. Cookie is the best part of the show. Yummy, cheers. And obviously the biggest drawback about this 16 to 35 is the F4. Now it's an F4 against an F2.8. Obviously there's going to be a clear low light difference between the two, but majority of the time, especially with the cameras that we got in it right now, it's uh 
F4 really isn't too much of an issue, but I mean, in certain low light situations, having a faster lens is always a better option. But this is where personally, for me, in my own opinion, and in my own use cases, I love using prime lenses because you can actually get faster primes. And you know, F1.2s, F1.4s, this is what's gonna help you out in those really low light situations and bring in a ton more light, which is so much more useful than trying to compare an F2.0 2.8 or an f4 now for a situation like this i've got the 1625 f 2.8 and i've actually got it at 1 250th of a second shutter mainly for the fact that i've got too much light coming in in a daylight situation and if i was at f4 i wouldn't actually have to crank the shutter as much but with both scenarios you're going to need nd filters anyway so when it comes to daylight situations f4 f 2.8 doesn't really make too much of a difference. And you're not gonna be buying this lens because you're gonna you know, require that shallow depth of field. At 16 millimeters, you won't really notice it. Obviously, when it comes to that uh, close focusing distance, that's when this 16 to 25 is incredible. Uh, in comparison to the rest of the field. It's it's pretty amazing, but you're not gonna be buying the 16 to 25 because you're like, yeah, I want really shallow depth of field. Well, obviously you would go a prime lens and get an F1.8, F1.4, F1.2, something like that. That's when the shallow depth of field is going to be noticeable. So another big reason why you might actually choose the 16 to 35 PZ is that PZ, the power zoom. So you've got a power zoom switch on the side here, which will allow you to do some nice smooth zoom in and zoom out. But also if you do have like the Sony uh, ZV-E1 or the FX30 or the FX3, you can actually use the zoom rocker on the top as well, or the FX6. My FX6 has a zoom rocker on the top. And that'll just allow you to get some smoother zooms. If you don't really want to, you know, using your hand to zoom in and zoom out, you do have that zoom rocker but there isn't really many use cases that I've actually wanted to use the the zoom rocker but I mean when it comes to the power zoom it is there if you do want that feature now when it comes to that power zoom another big difference is actually the zoom ring now this one is zoomed by wire because of that power zoom function whereas the 16 to 25 has a physical zoom ring which will stop you at 16 and stop you at 25 at the long end so is that a pro? Is that a con? Not really sure. <laughs> I mean, it's much of a muchness there, uh, and it really just comes down to use case scenario. But also when we're talking about that zoom, this one zooms internally, and uh, the 16 to 25 zooms externally just slightly. The barrel extends just a little bit, and is it enough to you know really worry about when flying it on gimbals? And I have to say absolutely not. It is definitely not enough to worry you. It doesn't zoom out enough where it's gonna throw out your gimbal completely at that uh, long end. And uh, obviously the biggest pro of the 16 to 35 is that internal zoom. So you don't have to rebalance it whatsoever if you are changing from 16 to 35. And if you do have any issues when it comes to weather sealing, these new Sony lenses, especially the G lenses and the GM lenses, they're incredibly weather sealed. So you don't have to worry about moisture and dust getting directly into uh, where it sort of zooms out. So don't worry about that. You're still gonna get great weather sealing in these. Now, another reason is a very small reason, but it could be a pretty big reason for some people. And uh, the filter, I've actually got a filter on here right now, and that's uh, the Tiffin Promist 1 8 filter. And it's a 67 millimeter filter thread, which fits perfectly on these ones in my GM lenses. It's the reason why I bought it, so I don't have to use any step up rings or anything. And that's the biggest thing is that this has a 67 millimeter front filter thread, the same as the GM lenses, the same as the uh, the other lens that just came out, the 25 to 50 mil lens, F2.8. Whereas this one has a 72 millimeter front filter thread. So it is a little bit wider uh, right up the front. So I wouldn't actually be able to use it. So I would have to use a couple of my other filters uh, instead of my standard Tiffin one. So whether that's a pro or a con, it really comes down to you your particular situation. Now, when it comes to the buttons on the two, they're pretty much the same. The one thing that the PZ actually has is the iris lock. And not sure why they didn't actually add the iris lock onto 16 to 25. They actually didn't add it onto the 25 to 50 either. Uh, but if you do want to lock that iris, you can actually do that on the 16 to 35 PZ. And that just stops you from accidentally bumping it and going from uh, automatic to 22 like that and sometimes that's a little bit annoying on some of my gm lenses but uh you know it's really comes down to your use case scenario as well 
Now, when it comes to image quality on both of these, I mean, they're pretty phenomenal, especially when it comes to F4. You don't really see too much uh, softness when it comes to in the center and the edge. Because it is an F4, you're able to dial it in quite nicely. But when it comes to this F2.8, when it comes to the center and edge, it's actually quite sharp, you know, th throughout across the frame. It does sort of soften out a little bit to the edges, but nothing crazy. And if you do stop it down to F4, I mean, it's going to be crazy sharp. It's even sharper than this PZ lens. And the one major thing that you will notice right here is the barrel distortion at 16 millimeters. Now, with lens corrections on in camera, this is actually fixed, and you won't actually see this in video and photo, but obviously, if you are exporting without any lens corrections, this is the kind of distortion you're actually getting from this lens. And when it comes to chromatic aberrations and longitudinal chromatic aberrations, there pretty much is none. It's a very, very clean lens when it comes to any kind of fringing, which is what I absolutely love. And the only thing I can sort of see the differences between these two is uh, the flaring on this thing isn't amazing. I mean, you can kind of see a flaring artifact right now coming from my light here. Let me try and block it out there, there. So see this little flaring artifact at 16 mil, but even if I do go into, yeah, even at 25 mil, you can sort of see that flaring artifact as well. So you generally would use that lens hood to try and stop that flaring artifact and that would be recommended. I'm trying to get, there we go. But flaring is purely subjective. I love flares a lot of the time and uh, it's perfectly fine with me. I, like I said, I love flares. Now they both do actually have the linear focusing motors in them. I think that one has dual linear focusing motors. I think this one off the top of my head also has the dual, but it's pretty much the same and they're gonna be working well with pretty much majority of the Sony cameras and all the new Sony lenses will work perfectly with the A93 and it's fast, you know, autofocus system. So who's gonna take the cake? The 16 to 25 or the 16 to 35 F4 PC? And I mean, F4, Power zoom, I don't really use the power zoom. Uh, sure, internal zoom, it's great. It's got the iris lock, but I personally would have to go the 16 to 25. It sucks because I own the 16 to 35 and it really just makes me wanna buy the 16 to 25 because it's great value. But in my personal use case, I just don't use it enough to be able to you know, need the 16 to 25 because I do have a fast prime lens at 16 mil f1.8. So I don't really need one, but ah, man, it just makes me want it. It is better than my 16 to 35 in majority of uh, the categories that we just saw today. So yeah, I mean, I think the 16 to 25 is a winner in most people's eyes. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That would be amazing. I'll put a link in the description below if you do want to check either one of these out. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.